Huh, something new. Way to go. Leatherface was released in 2017 as a straight up prequel to the original 1974 film and Texas Chainsaw 3D. It was directed by Alexandre Bastillo and Julian Murray and stars Stephen Dorff, Sam Strike, and Vanessa Gross. And the story follows a teenage Leatherface who escapes from a mental institution along with three other criminals and a hostage where they embark on a long bloody journey in this Texas Chainsaw Massacre origin. What's up everybody and welcome back to my Texas Chainsaw Massacre film review series. If you have not watched them yet, I have reviewed all of them up to this point. I'll have them in the link down below, so please check that out when you can. And I'll be doing a ranking of all nine films following the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 film review, which will be coming up here very soon, which is already on Netflix as we speak. So Leatherface is a film that I've pretty much forgotten about. I have not watched since 2018. Now, that's not a fault on the film of itself, and I'm not saying that it's bad because of that. It's just something that I've not really had the desire to rewatch. And again, that's not a jab at the film. I think it's a pretty good horror film. It's just something that I've not really had a desire to rewatch as much as the others, which is, you know, kind of odd. This is a very different story. It's very different than what we've gotten. And therefore, I have forgotten some of the plot points of this film. Now, in my last review, and I feel like I must apologize because I had mentioned that the, the whole family squabble between the Sawyers and the Carsons where you don't really get that much in depth in that at the time that I watched Texas Chainsaw 3D. Well, now after watching Leatherface, you kind of do, but I'll get to you later, but I just felt like I, I must apologize for like a little mishap because it's just something that I've forgotten about. You know, like I said, I've not really viewed this movie in like three or four years or like since it came out. And again, that's not a jab at it. I still think it was good. It's not like I'm saying that it's bad, but I just felt like I had to bring that up because I realized that watching this movie... And what I said in the last film's review, there was an actual explanation as to the family squabble, but that didn't make it right, which I'll get to shortly here in this review. And I'm still sticking with what I said in the last review. Like I said, this is a film that I have forgotten, and I hadn't really watched it since I believe 2018. Still not the biggest fan of prequels, but the way that they presented this one, not bad. Not bad at all. This being the actual prequel to the original and Texas Chainsaw 3D. And it's a funny story, before I actually start this review, there was this whole contract where Lionsgate had with this property to where they actually had it in their contract to where they were going to make five more films. And because they came out with Leatherface so late, they lost it, which is why we have the Netflix version that we have today. Am I sad about that? No, not really. Not as much as I am with the remakes. And I know I'm, I keep all harping about that, but I would have rather to see uh, more continuations of those, of the 03 remake and the 06 film, than this. So am I broken up about it? No, not really. So does Leatherface live up to expectations? Is this a worthy prequel? Let's find out. Let's slide into the positives of Leatherface. The atmosphere was actually pretty decent. Knowing that this is set years before the original film, you get a lot of the same feeling you know, that you got watching the original, or so I did anyway. I'm not sure about y'all, but I know I got a lot of the same feeling and a lot of the same vibes that I got when I watched the original film. And it made it pretty interesting because the setting was done right as far as I could tell. You know, you have the exact same house from the original and it looked pretty much the same from what I could tell. It just goes to show you how more of a deep connection it had. And I really do appreciate that. I really do appreciate those aspects, especially when prequels are done a certain way. And that's what I got from this. I, I really did appreciate that. And that's why I actually did appreciate 
this sort of prequel and what they were trying to do at the time. And it is an interesting concept. I like the others that we've got, which is your basic generic horror film about these teenagers going on a road trip and then getting dispatched one by one after they run into this cannibalistic family, throwing in a chainsaw willy maniac. It's a different change of pace for Leatherface. You basically have these criminals that escape this mental institution with a hostage. They go on this running spree because they have this law enforcement chasing after them. And it's just something that made sense because Leatherface was amongst them. Leatherface was heavily involved and it was very easily to see the monster that became Leatherface. The main reason as to why this villain had came into being. Now, there's a downfall with that just a little bit, but I'll get into that later. And all the while, you have this corrupt cop chasing them. And it made it for a very tense, wild ride. And I gotta mention the characters. They're very believable. You have the, the two main honcho bad guys that takes this woman hostage, Leatherface amongst them, and this bulky type character that has a very unstable mental status about him and it made it for a very interesting you know interesting watch not to mention like as i said before the two main honchos that was like in charge of this whole entire thing just going around these small towns in texas and creating chaos especially with the diner scene it kind of reminded me of a bonnie and clyde scenario because it was a, a man and a woman that was ahead of these criminals. It did kind of form like sort of a Bonnie and Clyde scenario. Fuck, I love Texas. Everybody go ahead and put your keys and cash on the edge of the table. Clarice, get a bag. Put your guys on the table, man! And as I said, Leatherface was involved in this big bulky guy, his name is Bud, which I would have paid more for Leatherface than this other guy which I'll also get into later, but it was pretty interesting. It was, it was a pretty nice concept. And it was a change of pace. Like I said, it was something different. It was something new that they decided to bring to the table. It, it wasn't the same generic thing that we've gotten before. It wasn't the same generic storyline. It felt new. They just went a different route and it worked. The pacing was very well done. You know, once the movie started, once it showed the scene where the criminals and these people just started went ballistic and escaped from that mental institution, the film never really let up. The film never really had a dull moment. On par the whole time, it was just tense the whole time. Sorry, I can't snap it. It wasn't a dull moment in the film. The directors of this film, I've never really seen any of the other projects I've heard of them, but they did it right by this film. They seemed like they knew what they were doing. And the blood and gore was crazy. Now granted, you don't see anybody sawed up. You don't see anybody getting chopped to bits. It's not really that type of film like we've gotten before. Based on the storyline, all you really get is shoot 'em ups But up until the third act, and let me tell you something, it's worth the wait. Because when Leatherface shows his true colors, he chops up this one dude and it's pretty gruesome. It's pretty gruesome. He chops up that one cop, and then he kills that other girl, and it definitely made it worthwhile seeing. That particular scene right there just made the movie. This movie may not be for every TCM fan, but for something different and something new, and for them having you wait for a moment like that, trust me, trust me, you won't regret it. You know, if you have enough patience to like stick around, that it's definitely worth the while. It's definitely worth the wait. And think of it as a big ass balloon with tons of blood in it, just waiting to pop. As much as I admired the direction, as much as I admired the new take that they decided to go with, I did still have my issues. So sliding into the mixed, Leatherface himself, played by Sam Strike. He was always the reasonable one. He was actually one of the criminals that was that took that woman hostage, but he was the more sensible one. He seemed like he had his head on straight, which is why I never really paid him for Leatherface. Now going back to that Bud character, I seen him more as Leatherface than the other guy. Like the first time I watched this and the way everything played out, well, I know he's Leatherface, but oh no, something happens and he's not. 
and then you find out who they actually chose to be Leatherface. They kind of pulled this who is it scenario, kind of like with Scream, like who the killer is. They kind of pulled this whole like who is Leatherface card. And I really don't think that really worked. I really don't think that worked for the film. It just didn't really match up. However, and this is the reason why this is in the mix, when it gets to the third act with Stephen Dorff's character on the couch and with him chainsawing him up, I seen the crazy and Sam Strike's eyes when that happens. He really did get to me in that moment. That's why I'm putting this in the mix. But leading up to that moment, I never really bought it. It just felt all too rushed. When the actual reveal happened, it's just a little bit too unbelievable for you to actually process. It doesn't give you enough time to process that somebody as sane as this person to, can turn into this mentally unstable monster. It's just the way that the movie perceived, it's like they didn't give them enough time. They didn't give them themselves enough time. They didn't give us as an audience member enough time to process all this. And it just made it a little too unbelievable. No, I just don't really buy it. But up to the point where he kills the cop and that girl, that's when I really bought it. But leading up to that, no, nope, sorry. Now, let's slide into the negatives. Steven Dorff's character. The moment that he showed up, I never really felt for this guy. Now, supposedly he was a part of the Carson family, a part of what the other character in Texas Chainsaw 3D was mentioning. Oh, me, me and your family go way back. This movie kind of explains that line, but the way they go about it, though, uh, and Stephen Dorff's character really didn't help. It doesn't really help when you're not invested in a character, and I certainly definitely wasn't invested in him. It just seemed like he was a little watered down. He doesn't seem like he was trying all that much. And he just came off as a douche. He loses his daughter at the beginning, which is bad enough already, but the way they played this character out, you just couldn't really sympathize for him. You take one of mine, and I'll take all yours, Verna. All of them. I'm sticking by that. I just never really got into Stephen Dorff's character. They just could have done a little more. And about this family squabble, still didn't really believe it. Still can't really get behind that. Because the way they presented it, they tried to go more in depth than that in this film. And I still never really bought it. Just the way that they went about it was just all wrong. And I just couldn't really sympathize with that plot line. And even though I mentioned previously that I liked the vibe and how deeply connected it was to the original, it did feel a little bit devil's reject this, or devil's reject this, or however you want to say it. It did feel a lot like that movie, like a ripoff of the devil's rejects. But all in all, guys, this film is still a really good, enjoyable horror film. For a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, you might not get into it, but if you're looking for something new, and expect a gruesome ending, then yes, you definitely will be satisfied. There are still some great moments to be had, nonetheless, regardless of its faults. So if you're a fan of this series and want something different, you'll be deeply satisfied. It's a straight up happy accident. So Leatherface, what was your thoughts on it? Did you like the direction that they went? Did you like the whole hostage, criminals breaking out of this mental institution concept and like the all out, how they played Leatherface off? Or was this not your cup of tea? Was this not what you're used to and you just prefer like any of the others? Leave me your comment down below and give me your thoughts. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.